All right, greetings, assalamu alaikum, konnichiwa. What's going on? What's up, brother? How you doing? Yeah, what's going on, Tak? What's going on, Sterling? Yeah, what's going on, Sterling? What's going on, Tak? What's going on, both of us? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't know where that came from. It's a long day. All but right. uh, yeah, but you know what it is? Mm. It's, uh, it's it's the forum, the forum, the real talk forum coming mm. at you. Indeed, indeed. Yeah, man. So what's going on, though? Uh, how's how's this rainy season treating you? Yeah, the rainy season. For those of you who have never had the pleasure mm. of a, a rainy season, um, it's just what it says. It's not it's not like monsoon, like raining all the time. But for about what three weeks, it's a, there's a lot of rain. It can rain at any moment, and it, and it starts to really really get humid. Uh, for, I heard my first, well, maybe the first couple of cicadas to yesterday or today. Cicadas and been out for a couple of weeks now. Maybe where you're at. I, I, I really just started hearing a little bit. Like even now, I don't hear them that much. Okay. Um, but in as for those of you know, in about three weeks, it's going to be a crescendo. Like it's going to be <laughs> loud. You got yeah. So uh, you, you know, I mean, it's it's really really loud. Yeah, you got to get your sign language together, and um. Yeah. You know, but it's, it's just like, it's the, the, land of, of it's the land of the bugs, right? Mm. You'll, you'll never see bugs bigger. I heard they're pretty big in Australia, and of course, they're probably bigger in the Amazon. But in Japan, they're like video game size, like the, the ones that you jump on. <laughs> huge. And I never really bugs never really bothered me until I got to Japan, um, um, especially when you know I was living out in the countryside. Uh, now I, I'm almost traumatized by 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 bugs, man. I mean, I, yeah, it's kind of it's kind of funny. Like a, you know, when we were little kids, you laugh at women, like ee, ee, ee. and like now I'm like, you know, I'm yeah, kind of shook, man. Skirt. <laughs> yeah, yeah jumping, stand up on a chair. Yeah, yeah, you know, uh, you know. So dairy. another thing is um like for those Godzilla, if you're familiar with the old Godzilla movies or, or characters, there's one called Mothra, one of his arch enemies. And it's a big moth. And I remember, even as, as a little kid, I was like, why would they choose a moth mm. to fight Godzilla? It's kind of corny until I moved to Kagoshima. Yeah. And you see how big these big. moths are, man. They're like butterflies. And um bigger. And they and they and like uh, if you the kind of house I had where it had schema, um, like little cracks, it was an old house from the maps. Yeah. It was made in the Meiji during the Meiji um, era, like so in the 1800s, late 1800s. And, uh, you know, I lived in a museum basically, you know, paper doors, all that stuff. And, I, you know, it was nostalgic. Boy, that was, I was horrible. And uh, these things would get in, man. And you, if you kill them, your whole wall is dirty, you know. Oh, my God. They, they just, it was, it was, it was horrible. They're actual, they're, they're I, I like to call it, um, casual visual size you know like some bugs you're like is that a mosquito like is that like a is that like a roach over there and then some other times you're like is somebody in the house oh shit and, and it's just a bug like it's you know, a spider like, walking down the yeah his presence down the hall. Was so big that yeah. you actually felt like it was a an entity by you yeah the spirit um, in the room and then you see this, <laughs> this thing on the wall that's not supposed to be there you know man you know? Yeah, late at night, it can it can be a little unnerving. Yeah, so basically, it's a modern swamp. It's a it's a, um it's a swamp still. Japan, yeah, majority is a big swamp. It's a it's a swamp continent. There's a movie called Silence. I don't know if you've seen it, the Japanese movie uh, where the Christians were coming to Japan. Um, I didn't see. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, the the the, uh, the, the Highlander on it. Uh, the Highlander nigga was in it. Um, I forgot his name. The one who wanted to go out. On the streets and uh, start beating up black people. Remember that guy? Yeah, I know you're talking. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that shit was funny. Yeah. He was like, I'm gonna go on the street, guy, yeah. and pretend like I'm a, I'm a, I'm a victim. I'm just gonna start beating up black people. <laughs> but um, that movie, he, um, they, they just keep mentioning. They're like, this land is a swamp. It's, just, it's basically a huge swamp. Yeah, reformed yeah. land or, or reclaimed land. Like they, yeah. they reclaimed so much of the land. But yeah, it still remains like very swamp-like, and uh, yeah. the humidity is, it becomes a sauna. When the sun comes out in two weeks, mm. uh, man, it, it becomes almost unbearable. Yeah, you can to feel live it. here for for several reasons. I mean, I just you know anywhere I go, I got to bring a change of clothes, a towel, and I always have my hand in the sensu, yeah. foldable fans. Yeah, it's a it's the kit. If I don't have all that, so and some water. 
If I don't have all that stuff now, I can't go anywhere. You know, hydration prep. Yeah, yeah. I know. All I right, so, so that's that's your the you know insight into the rainy season. If you're coming to Japan, you might want to not come in June unless you're really coming for business or mm -hmm. a wedding or something. The wedding is not like it's a soon big break too. Month. Once it once it breaks from mid July all the way to August, it's like it doesn't even rain. It's just perfect. You know, it'll be hot. But uh, I like it's more than hot. You no, know, it's more than hot. It's, it's just ridiculously. I'm just not a rainy, wet guy. So yeah. And no, but the fall, heat to me, it, it's it's ridiculous. Well, on on a positive note, what would you say uh, is good with the weather in Japan? What's good about the weather? Yeah. Oh uh, well, depending on where you're at, where we live, I think the winters are very mild. Okay. Compared to like if you live in places where it snows. Yeah, yeah. Um, it doesn't snow. Like you might get one snow. We didn't have any this year. Mm. The no freezing of the streets. Yeah, and so that's I was gonna say. Yeah, main, mainland on a Honshu, the mainland Japan. Mm -hmm. uh, fall and fall really, even if people like summer or whatever season more, fall seems to be a season nobody dislikes because it's not mm -hmm. too cold, not too hot. And Japan's fall is long, man. It, it goes it goes all the way into December. You yeah. can comfortably walk around without being cold all the way to almost end December. And and you're just and it's just good, you know. And so to me, at least mainland Japan, uh the the, the fall is like, yo, you, you gotta come on that season. That's that's the time. Even the spring before the rainy season. Yeah, too. Yeah. The mid it's kind of an it's it's almost like the fall. It's not quite as as good, maybe it's nostalgic or the breeze, but um, it's it's very comfortable. So you really, that's the whole thing. Everything gets, except summer is really, really nice. Mm. You know, com you know, comfortable, you know, in the winter, like February or whatever is not, you know, but still compared to, like I lived in the Northeast in the, in the States or Canada, yeah. um, oh, man. where you have, where you have real winter. Ooh, Ohio. You know, Ooh. Yeah, so if, you, if you're dealing with coming from something like that, mm. this is a, a welcome, much, much welcome, you know. All right. Uh, something else, something else going on that's going to uh, it's going to actually be happening yeah. this summer, I guess it's going to be out of the rainy season, is uh, we, we have an announcement. I want, I want you to go ahead and make it. Oh, for yeah. Those, for those now, huh? hungry people around Japan. Well, hopefully we'll do it right. Um, Afro-Asiatic, we're going to launch our first food truck. In Japan right all right so uh, looking forward to it should be coming out in a month or so maybe maybe yeah, yeah, yeah. let's let's give it a month, okay. a month. and and really I don't I, I really was kind of skeptical about talking about it before but um, you know it's coming anyway we're definitely it's it, the truck is coming like next week and uh, I'm still kind of undecided on the name Okay, yeah. the name of the actual truck. The truck. So if anybody knows a name, got an idea, put it in the comment section. We might actually use the name you give us. Or I might just, you know, straight rebite that shit, you know. But please with, with you with your permission. That, that's the whole the whole point of asking for right for a suggestion, right? Yeah, you know. Yeah, definitely. Um, definitely. Yeah, so you can get us um, a name for the truck. So what can we expect from this? Um well, uh, when well, where can people expect to see you? I hope to hope to be first see us in, in basically Kansai because you know we have all of us who are running the truck. We have uh, other work, so it's kind of hard to leave the Kansai area at first. But hopefully, man, I mean the plan is if if it goes well, I like to send a couple cats represent Real Talk, represent Afroasiatic out to um, you know Tokyo. Uh, Especially up north or down south, you know, uh, to the. So we're talking about events. They're gonna maybe at events like Omatsuri or, or like or... Omatsuri. Definitely, we'd only go out to farther areas if it's Omatsuri. It would right. this okay. actually bring the truck all the way out there and just kind of wing it and see if you. It's better to hit spots where you know something's going down. Right. Like yeah. neighbor Omatsuri. So in the winter, you might drive all the way up to to north northern Honshu. Neighbor to my city is that that uh, that's in summertime. That's summertime. You yeah, remember I went last year. Oh yeah yeah yeah. While, no while no. While I was the, there. Uh, my bad. What's the winter one? They got a winter one too. But yeah yeah yeah. I know shark. Um yeah. Okay yeah. There's, there's yeah. There's Aomori, the winter yeah, festival. Aomori, yeah. You know. Yeah. It's Sendai. Easy to go in the time because everybody's off. You know what I'm saying. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Sendai is a place I want to hit. I've never hit before. Mm -hmm. But yeah man, it's good. it yeah. should be fun. You know what I'm saying. So um, look forward to that, y'all. 
if you're in Japan, we're going to get an Instagram up, all that, so you can see where we at. And uh, okay. yeah, yeah. And what about the menu? What kind of food is we're gonna have drinks? Well, what's going on? Uh, you know, I, I only do fish and chicken, so it's gonna be main fish chicken going between, you know, we're gonna have a lot of things in there. The good thing is we can switch it up when we want. Um, curry, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna put in a, a fried, of course, you know, fried food. You know, it's, it's easy to put out fried food on a food truck. That's what most people want to do when they go to food trucks. They don't want an actual meal. They want to get, you know, like a snack. Right. You yeah, know, not um, mess, yeah. Yeah, gobo, uh, burdock root. You know, we got uh, fried fish, fish and chips. That's what gobo is, burdock root? Yeah, English is burdock root. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, so many people ask me about it, like, how do you say this in English? But in Japanese culture, gobo is a, is a popular food, is a popular vegetable, yeah. right? Yeah. And, uh... Yeah, man. You know, simple stuff. And then we actually have other people who are good at doing things. Like we have a girl who is really good with coffee. She's, she's a coffee connoisseur. And hopefully we'll put her on it, you know, and she can use it on her, on her time and, and do like specialty coffee. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and gradually we're going to keep on, uh, it's going to be evolving and changing with the times or, yep. or what's going on. And, you know, okay. And I think, and that actually goes to one of the names, proposed names you were talking about. Mm. Right, just changing. Right. Um, yeah, yeah. The, the 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 idea is we wanna we would like to stick with either like some gods. I, I want to get with some gods, goddesses, especially the feminine energy, or. Oh. Hmm? No, no. I just want to. You know, oh. we're talking. We say goddesses in the ancient some of the ancient pantheons from India or <clears throat> Egypt or yeah. you know West Africa. Yeah, my mom Bridget. You know, I'm thinking. I'm thinking Amaterasu. Even the Japanese ones. You know, I'm thinking. Um, Izanami, I'm thinking, you know, uh, um, any, any. Uh, Oya. Oya, definitely. Oya. Oya. Yeah, I'm Tano, who is Oya? Japanese stuff for a minute there. Yeah. Mawu. Yeah. Mawu. Yeah. Oh, Mawu might actually be the name right there. It's funny because I was, I, I was just looking at her, some of her, uh, some information on her the other day, and I was like, yeah, I haven't shouted out Mawu in a minute. By the language, though, man. Yeah, but my woo is, is easy, phonetically very easy for yeah. Japanese people to How say. How would you write the woo? Yeah. How would you write the woo though? You know? Um, they're gonna be like my woo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ah, I didn't even think about that. Yeah, it's not why we woo. There's no yeah. No woo. Ma -u. They say ma woo, ma -u. Yeah, Like ma woo. Yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe we should call it twice and just be like Mau Mau. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm down with the Mau Mau, my nigga. Any of that. Even Rebellion. I was thinking Rebellion. Um, I want strong women. I, I, I really, I would really like a strong feminine energy name. Everything is so gay now. You know, it's hard. We had a couple of names in our mind. I was thinking of calling it like Prima Donna, you know, Femme Fatale. But, you know, the, the, the name kind of, you know, right now, the, the whole LGBTQ thing, we have to draw lines in the sand, you know, cast is they'll take assumptions, you know, and uh, we want the energy to be real, um, you know, balance. Real balance. Hot, yeah, hot. Real, balance is always the key. Hot, my hot, you know. Yeah. You know. So yeah, my hot. My hot or my hot those are some more, you know, goddess, goddess uh, yeah, principles. So, yeah, just so you know, we're rolling them off the top of our dome right now, so if you hear any of these names be on the food truck, don't be surprised. I'm already on my hot yeah. now, just talking about it, like my hot that might be it right there. It yeah, might demand some incense and you know go in some mm. meditation. The names will come. But if we have any suggestions or any suggestions that any of you may have, yes. please get at us. Yes, everything's appreciated. All the support. And you got about by 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 the way, you got about a week. Yeah, it's gonna happen in a week. Yeah. Yeah. So um, don't don't send me nothing after a week, man. I ain't thinking about it after that. Nah. Thank okay. You. Well, speaking of goddesses. Mm. Um, in the last installment of Real Talk, we ended uh, talking about some goddess, God energy. Mm -hmm. And um, well, actually we were going in on the book, Behind the Mask. Um, yes. And I realized just recently yes. that I've been pronouncing the author's name incorrectly. It's Buddhama, right? I was, yeah, I was saying Burma, Ian Burma, but it's actually Buddhama. Yeah, I noticed upon, it too afterwards. Yeah, upon, for upon closer inspection. I was like, oh, I, I even think I have it misspelled in the article so i gotta go back and fix that um but hey you know hey I mean, nobody's perfect uh you know but i you know, definitely want to make sure that he's getting his credit this guy because he this is a masterpiece yes uh, it is. this book 
I haven't and even at first. Deep. It is this. Ooh. Yeah, it's just spilling over with, like I said, the, uh, the the scholarship and the and the understanding that this man is, you know, showing of just J- Japan, Japanese culture, way of thinking, and how tapped in he is. I mean, you just got to give credit where credit is due. Yeah. You know. So shout out to Ian Baruma. And um, the first chapter is called Mirror of the Gods. Yeah. And mirror, when you think about mirror, you automatically have to think of um, what Issei Shrine. Yeah, where, where they, uh, they, yeah, that's probably the best part, one of them. Yeah, where you suppose they actually have a, a, a sacred mirror that you're no one's allowed to look gaze upon, mm. um, and it's in the actual uh, chamber, right? Yeah, with Amitarasu, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. So, um, mm-hmm. yeah. So, mirror of the gods. And and, and uh, yeah, the, the the mirror is really big in uh, Shinto, Japanese Shinto, right? That's the that's the the main representation of the god right it's, it's this the trinity um the the one is the mirror which i would consider the holy ghost the other is the comb is a comb or a brush hmm. and oh yeah and i linked brush, that okay, yeah yeah and i linked that to like um again i haven't really looked at it that long y'all but um i you know i forgot i, I looked at it sometimes and then you forget but um like fate time um, hair is always linked to some kind of fate or spinning the web of, of fate, something like that. And then the, um, I'm pretty sure the other one is like the orb or the, the egg or the ball. And that's why I brought up the orphigay before. And it's okay. kind of embarrassing that I kind of forgot already now, but I always remember that it was three things that Amaterasu had that represented the, the whole Shinto system. And I was like, yeah, it's like Father, Son, Holy Ghost. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, well, three is a magic number, right? Three is a magic number. Um, mm-hmm. And also in the in the very first line here, it says, man has always created gods in his own image. Mm-hmm. So hence, we're coming back to the, the notion of reflection. Right. Right? And it says the Japanese are no exception. Mm-hmm. Um, and I also like how they say the oldest gods and myths are not necessarily unique to Japan. Mm-hmm. And talking about how they probably originated on the Asian continent. But, you know, as we go further back, we know all of this goes into one ancient pantheon and um, loosely, like I said, maybe the highest level, one of the highest levels is gonna be like in the Sumerian pantheons or the Egyptian pantheons. Um, but, you know, we can see the similarities, mm-hmm. you know? Okay, and I think in the last time we, we were talking about um, I, uh, Izanami and, and Izanagi. Yeah, uh, and linking to sex copulation blending of the two female and male energies not male and male not female and female but male and female coming together positive and negative coming together right. out of chaos right you know out of and, uh, and, yeah out of out of chaos yeah it says in the second paragraph uh, mm. these two were groping around in the hot lava of chaos mm. with the jewel spear of heaven mm. Right, that's the phallus, right? Mm. When some brine dropped off its tip, coagulating mm. in the sea to make an island. Okay? Yes. Um, if you look, and I actually, I went and got, I went and brought it out of here. Um, the ancient, oh, the, uh, book of the dead. Or, uh, about to ask me? Up. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, okay, uh, a lot of people call it the, um, the book of the dead, uh, but it's uh, called Peret Peret Maru. You see, per in Peru, book of coming forth by day. Yeah, sure. Probably a better, better translation. Real quick. Yep. Uh, keep it still. Keep it still. Uh, per, per M Peru. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And in here, like you, you know, it goes in and, and it talks about here, uh, the same things. You know, and it has the there's so many male female pantheons. Like even if you look here. At this one right here, wow! You know, and this is uh, Anu, right? I think it's Anu. Yeah, the gods of Anu, mm-hmm. and um, you can see where all these are female and male, right? So we have what Shu and Tepnu, which is what the uh, Shu is the, the air, the land, yeah, the air yeah, and the Shu. land, yeah. And the is the water Tepnu is the water maybe? Okay, not the land. Okay, I I, I get a mix up too, but they're male female. So Geb and Nu, that's kind of who Izanami and Izanagi are more like, right? That's the earth and the sky. Mm. Right, but then as you go down, you have Set and Nebethet. You have Asar and a Set. 
Uh, right? So there's always a god and a goddess. Yeah, Susanoo and uh, Amaterasu. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. So yeah, in, in Amaterasu is Susanoo, man. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you always, you know, have this this positive, negative energies coming together. And, you know, although they're separate, but they, they really represent one energy. Mm -hmm. You know, okay? Mm, right um, yeah, so then the chaos, again, and here the, the chaos, uh, uh, the actual, if you look, they're actually always, these companies, they're always in a boat, mm -hmm. right? A solar boat, like you can see the boat here, right? Um, they're always in a boat and, and they're and they're floating on chaos. Right. Always know? on the edge, on the balance, yeah. Right. And I forgot the actual word they have for it. I this was years ago when I really, really was up, up in this book like that. And I need to crack it open clearly. Mm -hmm. But um again, I you know I'm the primeval waters. That's what called the primeval waters of creation. Mm. Um yeah, so you know, again, it's together. It's always, always depictions of boats. Where everything boats. is together, and everything is completely out of balance. Right, right. right. Primeval waters is 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 just what it is. Not, and and I always have to mention this to my students too. And I'm sure anybody who's who's black and in the states who gets into this kind of thing, you know, this is we're not talking about good and bad. It's not which which one's good or which one's bad or which one's better. It's what it is. You're either balanced or you're in chaos, and you're and you're and you're floating around in unbalancedness, or you're or you're balanced, you know. And it's it's a balancing game, you know. Uh, existing, just existing, and being balanced in such a chaotic world is like riding that boat, you know. Right, and hence that's why when you if you incarnate as a man, the way I've, I've read it, mm. that's the the reason why you're so enthralled or attracted to women because they're your opposite. So you're looking for your spiritual opposite so you can come together and make that energy mm -hmm. that they're talking about here. And he, you know, the, dropped off the, what do you say? Uh, the hot lava of chaos. Um, and it's uh, the jewel spear of heaven and some brine dropped off its tip, coagulating in the sea to make an island. Coagulating, right. that sounds like sperm. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, I mean, all, yeah, I mean, clearly what they're talking about, so. The jewel um, spear, the jewel spear. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, yeah, again, like, this to make us understand it yeah. in poetic words. But again, when there's a story like that, here there's a story like that in all of the ancient um, mythologies, you know, except for one that I know of. Mm. Well, mm. Kind of, we kind of went on that before, but let's let's move on. Okay. So we have yeah, Izanami Izanagi. Um, they, they're kind of going into the making of Japan, mm. uh, the actual the actual landmass, mm. and then the gods who populate it. And of course, Amaterasu, whenever you talk about the goddesses, and we already talked about Susano, the, who's the wind god. Yes. She's the sun god, goddess. So just, to, just to stop, just to point that out, uh, very rarely where you see a, a sun goddess being a female and the male god being the, the earth. Because I even ask uh, Japanese people, I say, well, is it mother earth or father earth? And they're like, of course it's mother earth. And I'm like, that's how I feel. But in your culture, in Shinto, is Father Earth. Susanoo runs the land, and she's the sky goddess. You know what I'm saying? So um, to have it flipped like that is is proof of the 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 way it was before, like the ancient world. Hmm. You no, know? and I always look at the ancient world. Um, that that dude uh, Miyazaki Hayao, he he makes a lot of that. He he always shows the ancient world as flipped where the woman is strong on the man's side and the man is actually f almost feminine. Like he's trying to, to, to tame this wild woman. If you ever watch Mononoke Hime, he, he tries to tame Mononoke. She's a wild animal from the feminine world, uh, from the, from the, from the na na natural world. My bad. Okay. You know, it, it's, just, it's just flip flop though. Yeah. To write on the, I heard, uh, a brother that we're familiar with, a guy named uh, uh, Dr. Arsir Ali Cordoba, goes by the name of Aziz, oh, Aziz, Aziz, the Duke of Tears. Tears. Um, and he was talking about that too. And, and uh, he said, yeah, in the more ancient world, it was the like you said, the female energy that was coming from up top. Mm -hmm. And then it got flipped. And that's all part of the male dominion thing because now the ultimate energy is, is the man, like, you know, like the Zeus and yeah. these things. But yeah, so yeah, and when he said it, I was trying to, to put it in terms of, of, of the Japanese uh, system, 
but um i never i never really got to it but that might also kind of show you kind of chronology mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying that's one of the things i was thinking about yeah, because yeah. he said in the in the old most old the oldest cultures you know we're talking about the woman was was you know because it's all about the woman right you know, and then as it goes to, down through time we're going to get on that because that comes up in, in later in this chapter okay yeah um but yeah but yeah but yeah it's all about the woman and even in all of their uh in shinto mm -hmm. you can say it's really all about the woman yeah yeah you know it's it's really focused on what what's happening with the woman what the woman's doing and the man is like the the catalyst you know, like he's he's the starter, he's the key. Uh, yeah, yeah. Anyway, yeah. Yeah, but like even I'm gonna tell us so the one story, the, the the real main story, where she hides inside of the cave, mm -hmm. and it's all, everything everybody was going through to try to bring her out of the cave. Like it's all about her, right? You know what I'm saying? Like, you know what she's doing is affecting everybody. Mm. You know, um, so yeah, you you can you can you can yeah. Like I said, to me, I always just bring it down to that when I think of um. Shinto, when I think of the you know, ancient Japan, that's just the difference. Um, so, so what about what about this? What about when he says right here, like uh, when Izanami and Izanagi are still going back and forth with what they're doing? Uh, she has to go to the underworld, right? Mm -hmm. She has to go down there. Well, she dies because she's giving she she, during giving birth, right? During giving birth. But notice how he writes it. Even it says during his painful birth she badly burnt her genitals and he he writes it uh in the preface but he's like yo just so you know even though one is male and one is female they never have a gender role on these things so he purposely switches the gender in the book because english is so limited to always basing off a of gender like romance languages so you never it's never exactly all one you, you know what i'm saying that's why it says down okay. there during his but i'm wondering I but I think with his, I think they're talking about the fire god. Okay, but during his painful birth, uh, a man and linked with birth is still kind of like a, a birth is a woman's thing. A painful birth is what a woman goes through. Right. You know what I'm saying? And it says during his painful birth, not her. Okay. And, and he is the fire general. And 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 um, I, we we skipped the preface. But he says that at the beginning, he's like, I'm going to purposely switch the articles of he and she throughout the story just to make sure you can never link it to just one all the time. Right, right. Because it's always coming from the same uh, energy. Especially at the beginning because it's a coalescence. It's not It's not just one thing. They're, they're, they're literally one thing at this level. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Um, yeah, anyway, uh, he slash she, but really she dies goes to the underworld and then she begged him not to look at her in this horrible state and he couldn't resist and looked at her but he went after her, right when he yeah. went down after her. Mm -hmm. but he just peeked at her and he saw her hideous and polluted and he was like oh and and, and polluted just means like yeah like she he so he called her dirty you know what i'm saying <laughs> right after that he sent she sends ugly females from the underworld after him Yo, to, to kill him, him right yeah yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> what do we What do we get from that, man? What is that? What What is that even? Well, I think a lot of it um, is on different levels, but one of it is just kind of a woman's uh, her right. um, her wrath and her uh, vanity. Mm. You know, like the whole look look upon me and, and, and you see me in my in my really ugly, ugly state. Mm. Um, you know, women. You know, women are the pretty ones, are the ones that take time. If you've ever been with a woman, you know you have to wait for her mm. to get ready. You know mm. what I'm saying? If you if you don't know what we're talking about, you're a man. I feel sorry for you. Mm. Um, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, uh, it feels, it feels yeah. like it just it just it just shows it like you said with the chronology. They're just going through the chronology and they're trying to express the chronology before humanity came, of how the energy came to the point of where we're at, where we're in the same process of these energies coming together. And we're in we're stuck in this chronology of these energies coming together, coming apart, warring with each other, you know what I'm saying? The sending the ugly females after him to to kill him. And then after that, he's so scared he divorces her. And then 
uh, in retaliation, she says she'll strangle a thousand people a day on his land, where he replied he would set up 1,500 houses for childbirth in one day. So he's basically like, well, you keep killing them, I'll keep making them. What about that? And and once the energies were together and they enjoyed each other's company, now they just, they're at odds with each other. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's because again, this you're talking about the, the whole, um, uh, what do you call falling, falling into these, into bodies, period. Mm. The splitting of the energy. So it's going to be, it's going to be chaos. It's going to be painful. Mm. It's going to be, they have, they have to catch, capture that somehow to let you know that really this thing is really, really, you know, it's, it's really because it's, it's the same energies that are just split, mm. you know. So, um, yeah, yeah, like you said, talk about quality. yeah, the split, yep, right. So now they have to sever the relationship, you mean what they're talking about, mm. you know. And so now that's the, the male energy and the female energy, whether Venus and Mars and all this stuff, they've made hundreds of books, but they're just really just trying to illustrate that they're two different energies. That's why a man looks at a woman and doesn't, uh, why did. Women, women, just get on my nerves. Or women say the same thing. They they can't understand why men, generally speaking, will do certain things. I mean, that's a man thing to do. That's a woman thing to do. Mm. And this is really they're just trying to explain that the diff. There's a difference, right? You know, yeah, there's a difference. You know, that's what I get from it anyway. Okay. Um. Yeah. Okay. Well, anyway, yeah, um, just just the just the level of uh, understanding you can get from this book about Japanese culture alone is worth why well, it's worth reading but uh yeah what where does that leave us today where are we at right now with it okay well i think that, like i said what we said the main thing is is that so when you study anything about J J uh, japanese cultures uh society culture religion or spirituality you have to remember that it all derives from the woman and that's the big difference between that in the west where everything is coming from the man the man energy even today, like, you know, and I always, you know, we went back and forth in this and yeah, there's a lot of um, uh, patriarchy there, you know, we, we went over it in, in some of the videos we did, but even all, all that, uh, my stance is when I look across the playing field, I I see the, the, the power of the woman. Sure, I see the man, the shot show, or, you know, the CEOs or the presidents of the companies. I see the prime minister. And I see all those things, but I still see that I, I women are I feel are running them. You know what I mean? I, I think that women run this thing, mm. and you can see it most clearly inside of the home. You know, and then moving on, even like I said, so so Shinto, which is the most the, the most ancient spiritual system, you got to remember that Japanese basically are ancestor worshippers, really, when it comes down to it. Mm. Um, but. The woman, it was about the woman. Now the times changed and it wasn't just in the West, you know, the, the West becoming strong, that's a, a symbolic of this male energy. And so now that has permeated. So you can even see before, you know, Europe or anything or uh, came on the scene, this kind of thinking, this patriarchal thinking, this man being uh, power thinking came from the next, uh, you could say waves of, of, um, of spirituality or religion that came to Japan. Mm -hmm. in the form of what it says like buddhism confucianism um yes, christianity yes. all patriarchal yeah yeah you know and what was the other one I, was it mencio menci I, I forgot the name of it there's another one and but and um, and even those i'm not i'm not too good at um these religions truthfully but, yeah, yeah me either especially um christianity uh before eve adam and eve it was lilith right and mm -hmm. lilith refused to be under him she wanted to ride on top she was like yeah we we have sex but i'm on top at all times and he couldn't take it no more so he asked god to get rid of her or she left on her own one of the two and then he went and got eve from his rib cage so even in even in the western ones it was it was woman first you know what i'm saying how they flipped the energy though you know what i'm saying and then yeah well, okay but you know what's funny um i don't even know where the little story is written but I don't, I don't think it's in the conventional Bible. Okay. Or is it? it I'm, I'm not really, I'm not the, really. The conventional is before the King James and all that, huh? Yeah. Well, I don't I, really you know, know. I mean, I'm from. It comes up as Jewish. Hmm. That's interesting. Know. That's something maybe we need to look up, but. um. Yeah, my bad. Yeah, because I think a lot of people argue about that when they say, no, no, everything started with Adam, you know, but even it, whatever, it's still add to what you're saying. Just the fact that they'll start, they'll, they'll try to start the story with Adam. Mm -hmm. 
like in the Garden of Eden, mm. even with whatever, whatever they oh we we cancel that out. Mm. But that's not the story that most people will know. You know what I'm saying? Mm. They're going to come to you with with Adam and Eve, um, and they're going to try to make everything come from this this male energy. Okay. Yep. You know. So um yeah, going back in here like it's uh uh Ian Baruma goes in and he's talking about the 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 um influence that Buddhism, Confucianism, and then later on down the line Christianity had. And one major thing is again it it, it changed from the male the female energy to the male energy. Mm. And he has a lot of uh he has a lot of um or a couple of quotes. I think one was by, and I actually used it in my article, mm -hmm. um, where he's where the guy's talking about how the, the, the man is everything, and the, uh, Buddhism was saying the man, the yeah. man is everything. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that, and it's like, no, no, no. Uh, you can't, you can't graduate to the highest level without becoming a man first. For the woman, her job is to become a man in order yeah, to yeah. the highest level right. of standing. Um, yeah. Um, and and, and uh, yeah, I know I know what you're talking about. Yeah, that was that. I was like, wow, that's in Buddhism, huh? Because I always thought Buddhism was a little bit more, to me, was a little bit more balanced out than Western religions. But no. Oh, and like yeah, that just thought of oh, here it is. Uh, Kaibada scholar Kaibada Ekiken. Okay. He wrote that a woman must regard her husband as her lord and serve him with all the reverence. In all the adoration of which she is capable, mm. um, since her chief duty is to obey. Um, that's not the one you were talking about, though. That's um, not I, but but, but that one's I, there too, though. That that's yeah. that was his um, reflection on what's going on, though. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I actually wrote that one. What you're talking about, I wrote that in the article. Mm. Uh, I didn't think I got it from this book, though. But um, yeah. It says that a man, a woman, in the end, has to become a man before she goes to heaven. Yeah, right. In, yeah, in, in, multi, in, in the reincarnation process. Mm. Uh, so, yeah, that's you know, that is really, really that pretty much hits the hits the nail on the head and explains it. Right. Uh, saying that the man is definitely over the woman. Right. Right. And just just threw it out there, and it was just it was just again it was. It's almost on a Susano attacking his sister level. It's like, yo, every once in a while, the male energy decides to come up and rebel. And I guess we've been in that rebellion phase, but it feels almost as if that rebellion is dying down because the world's getting baited in the mug right now, you know? And, it, and it's it's almost like like now it's, it's calmed down a little bit. Like, I, I we're not trying to do it anymore. Hmm. Hmm. You know? And the people, who are, the people who are, the people who are, you know, so-called patriarchal or toxic masculinity or whatever you want to call it um are doubling down it's on the double down okay and, definitely you know uh yeah yeah it's interesting to see just uh how much is clashing right now you know the, the clash the clash of clash of of well for for what we're talking about right now just the male and female energy right even right and how now confused, how confused how confused people things. are about it yeah a lot of japanese women are interested in that um epstein case and interested in famous rich people getting taken down for sexually harassing women something that they thought would never happen you know, mm. something that I kind of thought would never, not never happen, but I never thought it was going to happen. I was like, well, I'm, that ain't going to happen. They're rich. You know what I'm saying? Right. And it's like, no, no, you're, you're, you're getting out now. And, um, I, I remember reading about, um, uh, matriarchy and, and other societies versus how it is now. And it, just because it's going to turn, may, uh, like maybe it will turn into a matriarchal society eventually. It'll be the same bullshit. It's gonna be the same shit, you know what I'm saying? It's it's the, be... the flip side of the same ignorant coins, is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, the only good thing about it would be it'll be a change of pace. You know, you change it up a little bit. You <laughs> change up the book. Something new. <laughs> Went from McDonald's to KFC. There you go. Yeah, chicken burgers to chicken. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll do chicken fried burgers. Food. Wow, yeah. And then we might Still mix fried food. Those. <laughs> Still fried food, you know. Right. 
Yeah, that, that, that's interesting. And that, that's something that could definitely needs to be talked about. Like, I don't even know if people really have an understanding what a matriarchal system would even look like. Um, yeah, I, I think a lot of people look at it as in like, they're just happy that women are coming on the rise. And women, it's like, you, you think this is gonna be that easy? Like, again, it, like just hoping for the best outcome to me is always the, the, the mark of failure. You think it's just gonna end good just because you hope it will? All right. Yeah. I get, you know, that comes back to what this life is really worth. A lot of people don't really have an idea of what, what the, why they incarnated here, what it is they're doing or supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. And um, and most people never even really think about it outside of a career or outside of raising a family or doing things that I think that are, are very great and, and, are, and are, are important. But, you know, uh, as Brother Panic always said, is that the ceiling on it? You know what I mean? Is that where it ends? Um, you know, I don't know. Uh, you know, like I said, that's reason every person to answer for him or herself, but that would also indicate where those people are at as individuals on the spiritual growth chart. You know, where's your level of spiritual maturity? Mm. You know? there's, there's no, there's, yeah, there, everybody moves at their own pace. I feel that. Right. Everyone moves at their own pace. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, okay, anything else that you want to say about this, the Buddhism? Um, I think it's also important to note that the Buddhism and Confucianism, remember the reasons that, or at least historians have cited as, as why they became popular in Japan was because of their, uh, I guess, oppressive nature, mm. nature to control the masses. Mm. Confucianism, you know, gets into your, your morals and ethics. Right, um, Taoism or something like that. Yeah. Right. Whereas, because like, because because that's where you know you're kind of you're the god, you're 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 individual. Now it's coming into uh, mores and expectations, social uh, um, gimu, uh obligations. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know, so that's what this was really really good for. And it says like, in, but the, the the Shintoism and the power of the matriarchy as being like really really permeated to the government. It said happened was occurring all the way up until the Tokugawa period, mm. you know? Uh, and th that's when he said, he said, he said, it did everything, Tokugawa did everything to stamp out the last vestiges of matriarchy forever. Yes. Because he was the absolute ruler, right? Right. He right. was the absolute ruler. And so, he, yeah, he didn't want anything, you know, you know, and plus and he was a man, right? He wasn't ruling, you know, like that. But again, there's so many shamanists like Himiko-san, there's so many. Um, mm -hmm. uh, there was even there was even warlords, right? That were females, that were really really running stuff. Ninjas, and, the, the kunoichi, all that. Yeah. And so when we were talking about those uh, young ladies, we had a uh, we had a, 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 a small or a video the other day over in Osaka, mm -hmm. and I was saying that you know there's really there's no comparison to any woman of that nature. Or, or that high prestige in, in Western culture. Mm. You know what I'm saying? When I say Western culture, I'm not talking about black people right now. You know, because we know in black black people, we got all kinds of strong women. That, right, that, and that, that not, no, not no mytholo mythological Helena Troy shit neither, like right. people. And the only one I can really think of is, um, I've heard of is Joan of Arc, and I, I still haven't done the, the, the real knowledge on her, mm. exactly what she did, exactly her time period and everything like that, but that's the only woman I can even think of other than like some of the uh, uh, goddesses, the Greek goddesses. But again, as soon as I, I looked into that and I, I looked at Athena, who I knew Athena was supposed to be the, she was a, um, uh, the goddess of, not war, but um, um, what is she the goddess of? Athena. I thought Athena was was the uh, like Kanon san, like um, the goddess of, um, well, not, is it beauty? No, that's Aphrodite. Power. Oh yeah, Aphrodite. No, she's definitely no, she's definitely like a war, some kind of warrior. Um, I'm gonna look right now. Uh, because I remember just I remember the stories. I remember I was like, oh yeah, she's she's kind of bad. Uh and um she's got the, war. Mm. Oh, it is war, yep. War crafts, yep. Yeah. Favorite daughters is okay, so yeah, but anyway, um, but when you go in and start reading about her, mm -hmm. the many of the Western scholars will say that she was like male and female. Mm. They won't let her just be female energy. Okay, yeah, yeah. So, cool. so whether how it was in the past, you know, I'm talking about the way it's interpreted by the Western men scholars themselves. I'm not mm -hmm. talking about something I'm making up or what my opinion is. Mm. You know, I'm talking about what their opinion is, what they what's written. And you can look that up. You can find that in Wikipedia. You can find that anywhere. 
So there's no, you know, just giving women her due mm -hmm. as being, you know, just like, no, we're not even gonna let you think that this occurred. She's up under some kind of man. Um, and I think even in the mythology, I can't remember it now, but there was something with with a man, like, you know, she, you know and they always, they dress her like a man all the time. And, yeah, they're doing that with that, um, uh, they're doing that with that, that new, um, uh, what is his name, John Brown? Uh, the, the, the white brother, the white, the white yeah. dude. And they dressing up a brother as a female. And she, uh, well, you know, know that, yeah. Not even they always do that. Yeah, they um, always do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I was gonna say, uh, you you said they stamped it out. They stamped out the the knowledge. They they stamped out the the woman, Tokugawa did, and uh, that's, the oh, that's what he does, right? He stamps the ground, right? Is that the you know the fumier where they where they yeah have, fumier oh, mm -hmm. they put Jesus Christ's face on the ground and they had to stamp that out. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, stamping out seems to be the way to do it out here. You know? <laughs> yeah, I was talking about that the, the fumier and they had to spit on it. Sometimes like you know they had to you know spit on they it, do all yeah. kinds. Of, yeah, they had to spit on it. They had to. Um, that's they had to the silence other... too. That 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 silence movie that's in there. Right. Yeah, that was that was uh, huge. And you know you know what the uh, I just got through reading something in one of the test books I was talking about. And you know what the one of the main punishments were for the people who wouldn't stamp on it, who failed that test, and how they you know, you know they the killed poles, them. Were they strapped in the poles? And either one, they took them out to the sea and put them out there, yeah. and when the tide came, slowly and drowned them out. Or but they would actually like have it like here, like right. Where it, it's just like going up. Yeah, you, just you know, enough like, where you can stay. Yeah. Yeah, for like so you'd be there for like three days. Three days, yep. And you die of exposure was, more than anything else. Take it to the onsen side and, and keep pouring a hot boiling water over you. And just I mean, slow. man. I mean, people can think of some really evil stuff, but what always gets me is those people who wouldn't stamp on it. I, mean, I just cannot imagine. Do you imagine that? You know, I mean, I have to like, oh, I didn't know this was what the, the penalty was. I mean, you know what the penalty is? But you know, in the movie though, I don't want to get no spoilers. It is kind of in the middle of the movie. So don't watch this part if you really want to watch it, watch it. But um, the, the, the um, uh, missionaries were coming over there over to Japan to, to try to rescue whoever they could or whatever. And so they get locked up with, with the um, Japanese. Now, they're not going to kill the missionaries. They just don't do that unless the missionary is really causing trouble. And uh, so the missionaries are around the slaves and the slaves, they're like, yo, um, you're going to step on this mask or not? You're going to spit on this mask or not? And they show the missionaries, like, this is what we do to our own people. So just so you know. And the missionary is looking at him like, one of them, he breaks. He's just like, yo, just just do it. And she looks over at him and she's like, God will forgive me though, right? Everlasting, I, I don't. I won't be a slave to these people anymore. Nothing's gonna happen because he promises everlasting life in the kingdom of heaven where I don't have to work no more. My, my family's gonna be born in heaven. That's what you said, right? And they're looking at, the, the missionaries are looking at her like, uh, and you're like, oh shit. They starting to doubt their own, their own shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man, life or death. Life or death come at you, man. You know, hey, you know, that's when you find out what you really believe. Mm. You find out what you I'm really, just saying, really the believe. Missionaries weren't even thinking they was gonna get to that level. They ain't even believe it on that. Yeah, that's they yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about them. Yeah, yeah. I'm talking about them, you know what I'm saying? All that propaganda going out the window, mm. you know, when, when when your ass is really on the line, you really believe it. You know what I'm saying? That's when you see what you really believe. Um, yeah, so just thinking those people who went through, you know went through that uh and like you said yeah they were they wouldn't kill the the missionaries until they officially declared the sakoku yeah then they killed a whole bunch of them the country <laughs> the country out yeah. yeah they closed the country and then and, and it's funny and some guys were acting like they weren't gonna leave and i got through when I, when I was talking to the kids about this uh some high school kids and uh and i told them i explained to them first of all they were really shocked when i talked about how the pope split the world in half and gave one side to Spain, one side to Portugal, and Japan fell on the Portuguese side. The Japanese, you know, just have a sovereign line. Like, what do you mean? You know, I'm like, well, you, you know, and then give them something that's in their history books that they'd be like, yeah, that's true. I did read that, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, looking, just looking at that. And I remember, uh, what was the second one? Mm -hmm. Just about uh, Christianity. Uh, I can't remember. Um, but they really, really, really were shocked to find out um, uh, I can't remember what I was going to say now. 
Mm. But uh, you know, yeah, just just the um, just finding about just about their history and how much they don't really know. Ah, I can't remember what I was gonna say though. Something about the Sakoku. Ah, maybe it'll come back to me. Okay. But that was a, a real a real time, you know, in history, huh? Yeah, imagine that. Just like like we're talking about whatever's going on right now, but yo, it's been extreme forever. You know what I'm saying? Oh, you got it? Yeah. Uh, I talked about the the, uh, the Jesuit priests, right? Who they know of, and I said we, we, we you said come though those guys were coming back to save somebody. That probably was a story. Yeah, because that's what they were talking about that in the, in, in the thing I read. Yeah, they were coming back to get uh, a priest Ferrera. His name was Ferrera. Right, 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 right. That's and um and and they were yeah, they thought he was a traitor. He had he had traded. They didn't know where he was at, and so they came. They sent those priests back to find him. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So I read. Okay. And um, I told them, I said, so these priests, I, I explained who they were. I said, they are the extension of the military. They were their spies, basically. Mm -hmm. So they come and they see who they can get to turn. And at the same time, they're, they're, giving, they're giving readouts of where the castle, who has the strength, where the arms are being, and they're sending all this intelligence back. Yeah, yeah. And if they can't, if they can't, they can't get the, the, the country to switch, and, and I, I talk about all the Asian countries, all the African countries, mm -hmm. and the kids can readily see this, you know, now in real time. Mm -hmm. And I said, but for the countries that wouldn't switch, then they send the military. Right. Right. You're gonna you you, you you say the hard sell or the easy sell? Yeah, yeah. It's always no. the hard sell or the soft sell. Or the soft sell. Yeah. yeah. I was trying to soft sell you. Um, yeah. The tall grass. Uh, Stephen King. In the movie The Tall Grass. Yeah, it was good. Yeah. But the kids, they can really relate to that. Cause I'm, I'm really trying to just give them you know, where their where their history kind of leaves off where they learn in their in their school education their history classes and then just link and bring it back all the way because they have to they have to take these standardized tests mm -hmm. so it's not like these this is just information you know i'm just blowing off i'm like no you know and i'm giving you a way to remember it, mm -hmm. you know without having to try to memorize it you know you know i'm teaching them trying to teach them how to compartmentalize information you know, um, I, I think they're, they were very, very, very receptive to it and, um, and very, very shocked. So many kids, you know, have questions for me after class. Um, yeah. True teachers. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. All in all, I think those are very, very experiences, not only for them, but for myself as well. Yeah. Because you want to go through the story. I need to, I need to back it up with some, I need to get it out so we can, again, we're, we're, we're trying to chron uh, chrono chronologize it, chronic, chronicle, chronicalize it. Yeah, you make. I'm like, I can't say it now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Put it in chronicle order. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm trying to get the story straight. That's basically is like, like when the cop come in interrogating somebody, and he's just like, mm -hmm. look, look. I, I just got to get the story straight. Okay, what, where were you at 6 p.m.? Because then this, right. and this, and this, and you start to see where the flaws are. Right. And, yeah. Uh, what doesn't match I'm, up? Interrogate. Yeah, we're interrogating this society. We're 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 looking at these people like, all right what are you doing again like you keep saying you're doing everything right like where were you at 6 p.m like where were you during the tulsa massacre like what were you doing when these girls was getting raped like <laughs> what's going on let's get it let's get it straight on. yeah let's get it all straight let's straighten it out you know uh yeah. but yeah. that pretty much covers chapter one chapter one it yeah. pretty much ends up with the change over from shinto to uh, actually all the way to the Meiji Restoration. Mm, from right? polytheistic so that's when, to polytheistic. Right, and then that's where the push from the West, Meiji, that's where Emperor Meiji, he's the one that's known as the innovator, the one who brought Japan from the out of the, the old um, traditional ways mm. into the modern era, mm. you could say. Mm. Um, he, he really, really uh, welcomed a lot of Western thinking. That's when Japan sent a lot of uh, their scholars to Cambridge, Oxford, mm. uh, mostly over in England. I think I remember I was telling you that other book I read where that that's where these Japanese now, a lot of Japanese claim that they, they're the ones that, that made uh, kanji, the Chinese characters, they're called Chinese characters. And I never understood it until I read this book. And that's because they made a lot of compound words, like a lot of these governmental words, Democratic Party. I, you know, I don't even like to say this stuff anymore. Mm -hmm. But um, a lot of those combinations, and China has adapt, that adapted them or adopted them as well. And so they say that. So for those reasons, like those, they're, they're copying our language. And I was like, wow, that's a real stretch. Yeah, you know, to me, that's a that's a that's a real stretch. But that just goes to show how insular, you know, insular thinking, mm -hmm. um, what it can do. Mm -hmm. You know, or, or the consequences of that. Right. 
Okay. You know, whether you, you call the Chinese, they're the, they're the, they're the original people in, in Asia, you would say. Right, right. You know? Even in China, what is it? It's like 80% Han Chinese. They're not the original Chinese. So, right. uh, yeah, so, uh, yeah, they, they wiped out the original Chinese. Yeah. Right, because even the my Mongolians and all the people in Nepal, they're yeah. older than them, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And of course, you have to go into India if you want to talk about anything that's ancient, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, you know what I noticed? The next chapter is actually called the Eternal Mother. Mother. Yeah. So we're not done with this this female energy yet. You know, I, yeah, I forgot about this. And and one other thing we kind of skipped over, we got to kind of say it, not touch on it, but just say it one time. Like with patriarchy, with masculine energy, a lot of uh, homosexual energy comes up, you know? And I was just reading this one, uh, this, this tug of war between officialdom and the common people is indeed still going on. Censorship and other forms of control were based on the official morality which was not internalized religious mora morality, but included anything that supported the power of the state. The power of the state was the official morality. Homosexual prostitution, for example, was officially banned in 1648, although homosexuality was in no way thought to be sinful, particularly amongst the samurai. It was considered quite normal, desirable even. The reason for the crackdown was that the upper class warriors mixed with the lower class actors, hustlers, and other members of the Demi Monde. Worse still, they affected their habits. This was not acceptable for Tokugawa power, was based on rigid class divisions. So it was cast. Mm -hmm. It was cast. And he, he knew he had to put that even in control. But the, the ruling class is, is definitely uh, in the patriarchy is majority homosexual, even as even as, like it is today. And that Epstein thing, I think the, the, the people I was watching it with, they were just surprised on just how homosexual Epstein was. You know, you, you're looking at this billionaire playboy with all these rich elite, and all you hear is about the women victims, but you're like, but you know, Epstein and all that, like they were all doing gay shit. You know what I'm saying? They were, Epstein was their playboy because he played with them, you know? Yeah. And, and that's, that's part of it. I don't even think, can you, uh, we kind of mentioned it a long time ago, but can you even raise up in Western society without doing nothing gay? Uh, as a black man, it, yeah. you're re that, that's really, really, really difficult to do. It seems it's the tr it's the true buck breaking. It's like the the ultimate buck breaking is you have to do the the ultimate buck breaking, which is flip these flip the side, do what a woman does. You know what I'm saying? Do, do what a dude. And I was talking to a friend of mine today about that. It it also just seems like in this day and age, right now, you can't the strong black male energy is just so feared mm. and, and and whatever if you stand up and you're a strong black man people are going to shoot you down they're going to shoot you down and, and, I, and i was talking it goes back to the energy of when um especially a lot of black women when they you know they've been trained that if you if they have a strong black son they they want to beat him down because why because they think if he goes out in society like that he's going to get killed He's gonna get put in jail, he's gonna get killed. So out of their love, out of their, their misguided love, they end up beating him down in the house. And they end up, and they teach their, their daughter to be strong like them. You know, cause in fact, she's gonna be the breadwinner or she's gonna be the one running things, you know what I'm saying? And this man's gotta kinda step aside and, 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 and go into no man's land. Um, and and this, the result of it is this beta energy we have, this rise in homosexuality. I mean, there's other, uh, factors but this is a, is a big one this goes back to easily you can see this in, in slavery up until now it's, uh, yeah that that um that bug breaking seems to be the crux of how the system operates so, right no strong men no strong men allowed no strong men, yeah no. strong man is a toxic man wow you know um one nothing about the prostitution you know uh in in japan or not the prostitution, excuse me, the homosexuality. Mm -hmm. uh, and they talk about here how, you know, it wasn't looked at as bad or good. It was just, oh, he's this or that, you know? Right. Uh, what it seems like, because you can see a lot of homosexual, you know, uh, artwork, you know, that's not necessarily openly, like graphically sex. You have to kind of look at it like, well, that's two guys, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Or something like that. But also it was particular amongst the warrior class because these, you don't got to think that these guys would be off by themselves. Right. You know, for long periods of time. But I read another scholar in another book I have. Um, he was comparing it to how it was in Greek, ancient Greek, right. ancient Rome. 
Right. Where it is also very big. But he said, according to him, um, and maybe in the next uh, video I'll have the book here, has his, his quote readily available. But he was saying, although, yeah, it was not drowned upon, it was very prevalent in Japan, it was never the main, it was never the actual main way. Like that wasn't, it was, oh, and you're gay. It wasn't like, you know, whereas in the Greek and Roman society, from my understanding, um, that was it. And that was it. That was it. That you know was what I'm saying? Goal. Okay. Right. That was a goal. And then you just had this woman on the side for procreation purposes. Mm. You know, but you wanted to fall in love with a boy. And this is not just the warrior class. This is everybody. Mm, not just you know? the warrior class. It's not just the right. elite. Right. I was not just the elite. the elite thing. Yeah. Wow. Right. But uh, so, and this is a Japanese scholar who's saying this. He's saying, so that's the difference. So it never became the actual norm for us in Japan. Mm -hmm. It just wasn't looked at something abnormal. People had better things to do. They had more important, you know, fish to fry, you know, right. you know, anyway, sit around like, just like now, I think black people like that now, as much as people try to make black people have to be homophobic, I think it's just an, a thing of, well, no, I'm just, I don't get with it. Right, right. You and know what I'm saying? You didn't say shit to the samurai neither, you know what I'm saying? You're like, what you gonna say? Right, what you gonna say? Around. They're walking around like, you know, I, you gonna be him or gonna be you? Keep talking right. about <laughs> So even amongst them, yeah. We aren't talking about some limp-wristed, you know, yeah. hi, doing all that. This guy walking around with two swords and will split your skull. Like, there's nothing there's nothing weak about this. Mm -hmm. So already we're talking about, in many ways, something that's different than the conventional uh, homosexual that we know of in the 20, 20, 20th and 21st centuries. Mm -hmm. You know, at least on the Western side of the game. Right. You know, Western side of the game. All right. I think, um, I think we covered it. Um, uh, anything that. else? Nah, I think we covered it pretty well. I, I wanna, I wanna leave it kind of there because uh, it's a little too much to take in. You'd be surprised how much people are, are like, yo, what the hell are y'all talking about? You know what I'm saying? I'm like, yeah. And, and just, that. just to clarify, because so people, um, you know, because people always want to go away and want to make these labels. Uh, and I think Sterling can say what he's gonna say, but I, I think I pretty much know. We have in, in no way, shape, manner, or form have anything against any kind of, of, of uh, sexual preference mm -hmm. that a person may have. Again, um, that's just beneath that's just beneath me, to, right. be, to be quite honest. However, that being said, like, uh, and I think I said it in the last video, but I'm going to say it again because I think it's important. Mm -hmm. When I, I understanding how this stuff works is important, you know, for, for your own intelligence. Mm -hmm. So when I asked the kids, you know, I asked them um, when they seemed like they were conflating gender roles and sexual preference. And I said, Are, they're not the same thing. And then they were looking at me like, you know, like that, I could see they didn't really understand what I, what I meant. So I said, so how many genders are there? Mm -hmm. And the kids started make, counting on their fingers like they were doing a math problem. Mm -hmm. Nobody could and answer. One, yeah, one girl was talking about 13 and then another one, and the other two were saying five. Yeah. And um, and when I said five, I, I went through my head and I said LGBTQ. And I said, oh, uh -huh. so you're you're talking to LGBTQ, and they were like yes. But then I said, and I'm not sure about this, but it turned out to be a good learning experience or teaching experience anyway for me. I said I I think that they've added two more categories to that. I thought it was LGBTQTI or something like that. More, huh? That's what I think. So I heard somebody say. I haven't yeah. got any confirmation on that. But whether it's true or not, whether people sit or said, when I said that to those girls, mm. they said, okay, well, whatever that is, not let me go and find out and see if I agree with it. Mm. So basically they're just being, they're just, whatever they, they, whatever they, the TV, whatever the accepted mode of thinking is, that's what I believe. Mm. You know, these are like vessels, almost empty vessels, easily to be manipulated. Right. You know, um, and this kind of goes into the education system, the way things are in Japan. Mm. But uh, when I explained to them, I said, I, and then I asked one girl, and she happened to be the youngest girl in the room, and she said, I think there's two genders. And I was like, ding, 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 ding. Right on. And, 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 and um, you know, I don't want to insult anybody. I don't want anybody to get angry. But I was like, let me just, so I said, let me, it's, it's, this is not, again, sexual preference is something different. Mm -hmm. um, I said, but gender is science. And then I proceeded to, to pull a, an extension cord just like this one, you know, off the wall, just like this. And I did the same thing I'm gonna do right now. Uh, I said, you know, you know, this is the male, mm -hmm. the positive, and this is the female. Mm -hmm. When you put them together, that's where the energy comes. By mm -hmm. themselves, they're not really doing nothing, you know, you know, but when you put them together, this divine, this this energy, 
And I said, and how do you know that's true? I said, because that energy, that divine energy, that divine spark created all of you. Mm. I said, what are you gonna do with 13 genders though? You might blow up the house. Yeah. Have a, you want a short circuit something, it's not gonna work right. Mm. So this is not my opinion. This is the way this universe functions. There are laws that, that govern this universe and we're not to be conflated or confused with rules, right. man-made rules. Yeah. Or, you know, oh, edicts, yeah. beliefs, fads, yeah, opinions. Good. Yeah, very good analogy. You know? Yes, yes. I mean, I mean, that's the, the, yep, that's the analogy, the hermetic principle, all that, the, the, the positive and negative. And, and we're not talking about your little sexual preference. That's, that's definitely, yeah, don't trivialize what we're, what we're trying to, you're trying to explain to people the bait, the, the fact that we even have to discuss the basics of nature anymore, it just shows how chaotic it really is getting. So. Right, it just shows how much people don't learn, how much parents don't teach children. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and again, you know, uh, yeah, I think basically, uh, I, I kind of walk around Japan as a monk. And, and I kind of say a lot of things that go against the grain, but I mean, I'm not rude about it. And I'm not like trying to pick fights or anything like that, but it's just things that I can see. Like, again, I, I teach certain things, but in the, in, in the end of the day, I'm a teacher. You know, I'm not a, an English instructor. I'm not, I mean, I might do some of those things. Mm -hmm. I said, but I'm always, I'm, I'm there to teach. And you, what do you teach? You teach what the student needs to hear. You know, and in some, and, and in vice versa, it's a circle. Some of the teachers, the students, they teach me a lot. In, the, in that case, they're the, they're the teacher. And I'll even say, I'll call them the sensei. They'll laugh at all, but I want to make sure that you know, credit is being. If yeah, you school me on something, that's what I'm here to do. I'm just here, just like you. I'm trying to learn. You know, when you become too big to learn, that's when it's time to go. Definitely. On that note, speaking of time to go. Yep, it's time to go. So. You know what I'm saying? We're gonna get up out of here. Uh, get up at it. Uh, get at us with those suggestions. Food uh, for the uh, the food truck. Yeah, if you can. Looking for some some female uh, female energy goddesses. Uh, doesn't have to be just that, but that's kind of the trend. You know, doesn't have to be preferably though. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, women energy has held us down a lot, both of us. Yes. Uh, so yeah, we're just giving credit where credit is due. Mm -hmm. um, on that note. Afro-Asiatic crossing mind, space, and time. Mm. I uh, hope we might even get that get that song on one of these. Um, I remember just, that. Yeah, 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 old, yeah. The old school joints. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, my boy sent sent it to me recently, so I heard it recently. Okay. So, uh, yeah, we might like I said, we get some music on with me. We know see we're getting another brother from Atlanta sent us some beats. So uh, yeah, you know we got some stuff coming up. Right. Uh, get with us. Get with us, man. On that note. Yeah. Uh, Real Talk English.jp. And uh, yeah, we'll check you out later. Afrasiac.jp. Yeah. Uh, uh, yes. And Guy Kogujin, hyphen the story.com. Yeah. One. Hey.